David King sitting with Caleb Ott here, and we're discussing his project. From which class is this? Programming Languages. Okay, and you are graduating when? December, in like three days. Three days you're out of here, going to where? Iowa, I'm going to Redstone Content Solutions. You and a whole bunch of your buddies are going out there, yep. placed and ready to roll. Yep. So tell me about this class. What are, we, what are we looking at here? So this class basically teaches you to create your own programming language. So this right here is my programming language roughly based off Java. So you wrote this language. I, I wrote this language. So one time, I was driving with my brother-in-law one time, and he said, so Jamie, I, I get the guys write code and computers make that code do its thing but who writes the code that makes the code do its thing like but where does that come from and that's exactly what this class is about is yeah how do you get a really dumb machine to do things at a very high level for programmers right yeah so you came up with this language yep and we start at the very low level and then we work our way up through assembly into this language okay so this language on the left here this is your high-level language. What do you call it? My language. You've got to give it a name. I don't. Aaron Friedman was supposed to come up with a name, and that slacker didn't. Okay, so let's call it the ot language. The ot, yes. So it's that's dot that's the so. ot language. Dot ot. Dot ot. Okay, dot ot yep. files, because your last name is yep. ot. And then what's on the right? What's so this th file on the right? So this is my own assembly, and I didn't follow standards or whatever. But <clears throat> this is what my ot language assembles or compiles into. So your compiler takes the language on the left that you came up with mm -hmm. and turns it into assembly instructions on the right, yes. which is still not executable by a CPU inside of a computer. No, it is not. So what's the next step we got to do with the instructions on the right? <clears throat> so the next step is another process which assembles this assembly code into straight machine code for the CPU to actually run. Okay. And you can see that here with the actual straight up just numbers and this can be put straight onto the CPU and it can run it now. Okay, so tell me how this class folded out because you said you started by doing the hex numbers first yep. and then keep going, what was, finish that up. <clears throat> so you start the class by writing straight hex commands and you use this instruction manual here and you can look at different commands and it tells you the different bits that you need to write. So you write all those bits, you put them into this hex editor writing straight numbers and then you can put it on the CPU and it runs it. Okay, what CPU? So for this class or for this instruction manual we have, it's for the Raspberry Pi. Mm -hmm. So you have to get your own Raspberry Pi, put it on the SD card and it executes your commands exactly as is. Cool. So from there you started with this uh, straight hex and then you moved on and you started writing your assembler. So then, and this is all compiled assembly, so it's pretty crazy, but you can write simpler assembly where you just have your simple commands, <clears throat> and then your assembler takes these simple commands and turns them into this hex that we did earlier. So you progress from writing this hex by hand to writing assembly, which generates this hex for you. So the assembly is a little more human readable, though it's, it's still looking a little cryptic. Right, so it's, each assembly command basically just wraps a hex command so it's just putting words around a bunch of numbers, so it's just a little easier to understand, but it's still really low level. Okay, cool. Uh, how long was this course? Uh, it was a five-week course, but it was, really? more, it was more than five weeks of work. <laughs> uh, how long have you been working on this? Uh, seven, eight weeks. Seven or eight weeks. So how many weeks did you spend doing the hex? Doing the hex? Um, it's a straight hex you're typing in the hex. How many, probably, probably how many weeks? One to two weeks, okay. something like that. And then how many weeks did you spend writing the assembler? You wrote the assembler. Yep, assembler is completely, just wrote everything in Java. Um, probably a good five weeks was spent using, writing the assembler. So you were doing a lot of this on your own time outside of the class. Oh yeah. Why? Because it's awesome. Um, so everything we've learned, we've learned how to write code in you know Java or C sharp or whatever and it just magically does stuff for you this is actually you see what that magic does you you write the process of turning your magic code into you straight up write the commands that run on your processor and you see how those commands are built from your magic high level code very cool you're leaving Newmont University in about three four or five days somewhere around there mm -hmm. 
Uh, what can you say about the whole experience? Of Newmont? Yeah. It was great. I, I hate learning at a low pace, a slow pace, and that's what high school was for me, and I hated it, and this isn't like that. It's, it's fast pace. You get thrown a lot of stuff in a short amount of time. You got to pick it up. You got to go. You got to spend time on your own learning it. It's not teacher tells you how to do it, and you just know it. You have to do it. You have to learn it. I like it. I love it. I feel like I learned a lot. Cool. All right, kick trash in the industry. <laughs>